Hi, I'm Kathleen Irvin. I'm one of the librarians at the Highland Health Sciences Library. I'm going to talk to you today about searching the databases available on the Ovid platform within the Knowledge Network. The Knowledge Network is the suite of resources available to staff of NHS Scotland. It's also available to any students that um, do placements with NHS Scotland. So, to register for a username password for this excellent suite of resources, you need to go to the website, and the website is located at www.knowledge.scot.nhs.uk. And if you click on the login button here, uh, you, if you've already got an Athens password, you can enter that. If you haven't already got one, you can register using the appropriate link below, depending on whether you are NHS staff or uh, an undergraduate or postgraduate student. And once we're logged in, we can find the appropriate suite of databases. To do that, we can click on Library and Databases. And it's the Ovid collection we're going to look at today. There are many databases that NHS Scotland buy from Ovid. Um, just a word about these ones at the top. We tend not to use these. If you use that one, you'll end up with many, many thousands of hits, um, mostly very spurious ones uh, not relevant to you. So that won't give you a very focused search. It would be one you might use in desperation when you hadn't been able to find anything on your topic anywhere else. So we're going to use uh, Medline today. Uh, you'll see there are various versions here, mostly uh, broken down by different dates. Uh, avoid the ones that say either without revision or in process or daily update um, those ones won't have the full functionality of the other ones listed there the usual one I would go into is the one at the top which is 1946 to 2012 now don't worry too much about the uh, very old start date it's very easy to limit your search to newer dates uh, once you once you're in there um, any of the databases within Ovid have a very similar interface once you get inside you'll see that it's defaulting here to the advanced search and a tip for you in any database the advanced search is usually your better option um, a basic search gives you much less control than the advanced search because of the sophistication of Medline uh, which is based upon a thesaurus of approved terms that will be used by the indexer and if they're used also by you you should be able to find the, the appropriate papers because of that we need to search for each um, word that we think of each subject we think of separately and allow ourselves to be mapped to the approved heading so I'm going to do uh, a search on uh, leadership and improving the patient experience so I'll start off with my first subject which is leadership So if I type that in there, it's mapped me and it's mapped me to an identical word. Okay, that's fine. I've got two options here. I can explode the term leadership to get all different types of leadership or I can focus on it, making it the main subject of the paper. Um, I think I'll choose explode but leave focus um, blank because I'm not sure how many results I'm going to get and I don't want to restrict myself too much at this point. So I click continue and it's offering me some subheadings. Nine times out of ten you won't be wanting to use these, you want to leave your subject wide. Uh, we don't want to restrict it too much at this stage, so we'll ignore those. Our results are hidden at the moment in this blue band called Search History. If I click on that I can see what I've searched for and the very large number of results that I got on that search. So my second part of my search was patient experience. Now, this time the mapping hasn't been so helpful. It hasn't found me a heading called patient experience and it's presented me with something that looks a rather random list of headings. In actual fact, what it has done is search for my phrase patient experience within the records and then it's identified the most uh, commonly occurring headings that were associated with those records so very often when you put that in it's it's very often the one at the top which is the best one and and this is the case here so patient satisfaction is the closest heading available for the indexer uh, to patient experience so i'm going to choose patient experience as a keyword as well that means it will search beyond the subject headings and it will search 
um, more widely in all the records in the database uh, for that phrase occurring. So I'm going to pick up both of those and I'm going to ignore the rest because they're not on my subject. Okay, so I've now got two sets, one of over 23,000 and one of over 50,000 results. What I really need to know are which citations are in this set one and also in set two because they're going to be actually on my subject or certainly closer to my the subject I'm interested in. So if I select the two and combine those with and, I'm asking it to give me citations which are in set one and in set two. So I've got 230 results, which is far too many to cope with. Um, so we need to think of ways that we could cut this set down. Um, well, one of the ways that we can do that is by getting an appropriate sort of paper, because some of these will be letters or editorials, some of them will be um, overviews of the subject, some of them will be much more precise um, case studies, for example. So what I'm going to look for here, I've, I'm going to look for any reviews. Now, the way I can search for reviews is to type in the word review and then do dot .pt and that will search the field publication type. So it will find me any papers which have been indexed as being review articles. So that's obviously very large. We haven't yet combined it with our subject search. So I'm going to combine the subject with the paper type using and, and that will give me a much smaller, much more focused set. So we've actually got 15 papers um, on that, but they're going right back, way back, maybe back to the 1940s. So I don't know that I want all of those, so I'm going to use a date limit. Uh, I'm going to say I want them only from, say, 2002 to 2012. You will know yourself what is the most appropriate limit for your search. And uh, I'm not much of a linguist, so I think I want them to be in English language. So I'll apply those limits by clicking the search button. So three papers were removed there. So we've got 12 results. So uh, we can have a look at those results by scrolling down the page. Um, I've got very basic information at this level. If I want a bit more information, I can view the abstract by clicking on, on that link there and get a bit more information about the paper. Um, if I want even more information than that, I can choose complete reference and that will open up the full record for me to see. So that gives me a, a lot of extra detail and the headings that the indexer has used um, to describe this study. So looking at those, I can see that it's about um, emergency nursing, it's about triage and telephone triage, like that. So, so any that I'm interested in keeping uh, to have a better look at, I can select just now. Right, we'll just choose a few, but I could work through um, through the whole lot. Okay, so I've chosen some there. I've got a few options here. I could print off those records. I could email them to myself or a colleague. Uh, but what I'm going to do is export them. If I click export, the default option is for exporting them to Word. So I could produce myself a Word document that I could print out and that would be a list of those papers. Um, but I'm actually going to choose a different option. I'm going to choose RefWorks, which is a reference management program which allows you to, it's basically a piece of web space where you can store your references, organise them into folders, produce bibliographies very easily. And they're going to be there, saved for us as long as we've got um, access to the knowledge network. So I'm going to change the setting to citation and abstract because I find it helpful to have the abstract exported as well. Then I'll choose export citations and it should take me right out to RefWorks. I've got two options for RefWorks. I can either use the university's RefWorks by choosing it from the list or I can use the NHS's RefWorks by choosing Athens Credentials. And I'm going to do that in this case. Okay, so this is my RefWorks area and I should see my references coming in. So if I view last imported folder, they're the ones that I selected. 
So what I need to do now is to create a folder. And so I'm going to call it leader, leadership and patient experience. And I click create. And I can choose all in this list. And, um, and I can come back to that. I can log in at refworks.com whenever I like. And these records will be there for me to access. Um, what I can do with this, I can use the SFX link, which was also available within Ovid. I can use that link to check for the full text of that paper. So what I would do is click on the link and it will see whether that one is subscribed and it's telling me yes it is and where it's located. So I just click on the, the go button and it should be able to take me out, if I'm fortunate, right out to the very paper. Occasionally it can't do that and you'll actually have to search within um, the website that it takes you to. But this one has taken me right out there and I can just click on view full text and I'll see that paper.